should be recording now. Well, I want to um, thank everyone for being here today and welcome you all to today, uh, Missouri's quarterly meeting of the combined AEM Accessible Educational Materials Stakeholder Group. And that's a mouthful, so I have to read that. Um, someday I'll probably be able to say it without without reading it, but I want to make sure that I tell you the right meeting we're in. And I uh, want to welcome you all. My name is Kristen Funk. Um, I'm the Assistant Director of Achievement and Effective Practices in the Office of Special Education here at DESE. And I'm joined today by my esteemed colleagues, and I wanted to do maybe some quick introductions of some folks that are probably new to this meeting that some of, some of you on the uh, meeting today may not have met yet. And so I wanted to give an opportunity for uh, Dr. Tim Rowling here in the Office of Special Ed to do his introduction. Uh, because you probably haven't met him yet, uh, a lot of you. So, Tim, would you like to do an introduction? Absolutely. Um, my name's Tim Rowling. I am a coordinator here in the Office of Special Education. I started in June, um, and it's been a whirlwind. I'm still learning, but it's been really exciting, and um, I am glad to see everyone today. Thank you. That is great. Well, we're like, uh, really glad to have you aboard, Tim, and we're glad you're here and helping us move the project forward. And we've been doing quite a bit here in just the last uh, month or so just to help uh, move us forward. And I know there's going to be plenty more to come. Um, I'm going to switch to my next slide here just to let everybody see uh, just a quick agenda for today. Uh, we'll do some introductions, and I want to give everybody on the call today a chance to do their introduction, you know, at a minimum, just your you know, your agency, your name, your, your position. And, you know, if you've got something that kind of ties into our project with accessible educational materials, by all means, you know, give us a quick uh, update of what you've got going on. And then we'll. Uh, five, seven, three, six, one, nine, six, three, zero, five is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished sure recording, you that. may hang up or press one for more options. I guess, can everybody hear that? Okay, I hope that doesn't happen yes. again. I'm not sure what that was. Um, but we'll jump into the uh, a quick, I'll do a quick background of the project and our project hi history. We'll, we'll do some updates on our project. Uh, we'll have those from our stakeholders, uh, anybody that's um, on the call today from early childhood, higher ed, workforce development, and collaborators. Uh, and then we'll have an update uh, on the progress of our state leadership team, and David Baker is going to do that for us today. And then just some quick wrap up, and we're going in the future. So, um, getting a little bit of feedback. Uh, we might need to mute some calls, but I don't mind at any point if you all unmute and jump in and speak at any time. Um, first off, if um, maybe we can just kind of go in the order of of the stakeholder groups that are that are listed here on the screen for early childhood. If we've got any early childhood folks, which I know at least probably one was not gonna be on the call. If we have anybody from early childhood stakeholder group, feel free to do an introduction. Higher ed if we don't have a early childhood. I don't know if Stacy or Cheryl maybe are not on the call today. So I think we can go to higher ed. Uh, is there? Uh, anybody on the call today from higher ed? My name's Kelly Akers, um, and I'm sorry, I, I, my camera doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't recall if I'm from workforce development yeah. or higher ed. I'm actually an area career center director um, of a career center that's based at Ozarks Technical Community College. Um, so, while I manage the secondary part of that program, I'm also involved with the post secondary. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Kelly. That is great. Thank you for that update uh, and that introduction. Um, so, anybody else, uh, workforce development, let's just try to go through anybody who's on the call today. Uh, my name is Pat Rungi with the Office of Special Education Effective Practices. And I'm on the workforce development um, stakeholder group. Did you want us to just introduce ourselves right now or go ahead and do our updates? Well, let's just wait on the updates because um, okay. I know um, we'll do that a little bit later. But yeah, if anybody else for introduction for workforce development. 
Um, my name's Amy Bowen, and I'm with Vocational Rehabilitation, um, and I'm on the Workforce Stakeholder Group as well. Um, happy to be here. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. Anybody else on the call today? From Workforce. Okay. I know uh, Yvonne Wright uh, let me know this morning uh, that she was going to try to make it. She might be a few minutes late, so we might she might join a little later. If you see Yvonne Wright, uh, come on. Would uh, would you all let me know, and we'll have her do her introduction as well. Um, and then um, K-12 collaborators. Uh, do we have some of those folks on the call today? Good morning. This is Samantha Scott, and I'm the Transition Services Coordinator with Rehabilitation Services for the Blind, um, and it's great to be here today. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. It's great to have you as well. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Dawn McNeely. I'm one of the um, school districts involved. I am with Smithton in about mid-Missouri, not too far from Sedalia, and I am the Special Services Director. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate it. We have any other of the K-12 collaborators on the call today? Okay, and let's see. Do we have um, any other uh, districts on in addition to Dawn that are also a member of our state leadership team? I know Carrie was going to try to make it if she could. Uh, she may not uh, be on for very long, but she has a meeting going on at the same time. She said she might try to put uh, a quick message in the chat sometime if she was able. And um, and I'm not sure if Vicki was going to be on the call today or not, if she could make it. Um, so thank you, Dawn. And then other members of the state leadership team, uh, would you all like to do a quick introduction? Sure, I'll jump in. This is David Baker, and I'm the director of Missouri Assistive Technology. And looking forward to hearing from everybody today and seeing what everybody's up to. Thank you, David. I'm Thea Scott. I'm the director of the Effective Practices section. Nice to see everybody. Thank you, Thea. Uh, Stephen Barr, Assistant Commissioner for Special Education. Thank you, Dr. Barr. Are there any um, others? I, oh, I'm Angie Reiner Mooney. I'm coordinator for business systems for the Office of Special Education for the department. Thank you very much, Angie. And I am Gail Willie. I'm the executive director for Mo Case. And I believe this is where I jump in and introduce myself. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Thank you so much, Gail. Is there anyone else? Okay, well, thank you all for those introductions. I think it's helpful for us to uh, hear from everybody and know where everybody's at. And um, I appreciate you all giving those introductions. So now I'd like to just do a quick uh, background and history of the AEM project, because for some of us, we're, we're meeting on a quarterly basis I know some of you all are, are also meeting with uh, the National Center uh, for AEM and getting updates from them. And we'll have, have any updates that you all have from those meetings or other activities that you have around uh, these accessible educational materials. But I'll just do a quick uh, project background. Just move something around here if I can. Um, so basically, just to give you all a quick uh, recap of our project, uh, it's a four-year project and Missouri was selected uh, as a member of the seven state cohort by the National AEM Center back in 2020, just last year. So we have just completed our first year of the four-year project. And it's really been a lot, a lot of planning and just pulling people and teams together. And then there's a lot of uh, predetermined um, self-assessments and different things that we've 
gone through with the state leadership team to basically look at our system right now where it stands, where we're at on accessible educational materials and utilizing our three local districts, which are really pivotal for us as far as uh, determining, you know, what our next steps will be and where we're at and where, where should we go? What are the actual needs out throughout the state? So, um, and then just a quick overview of our teams. You all have seen this slide before, I think, but we've got a state leadership team. Um, we've got folks from the districts as well as DESE and then um, some other folks as well. And then we've got our interagency collaborative team, also known as our stakeholder groups. And so those uh, are composed of the early childhood, higher education and workforce development. Um, and the National AEM Center really sees this as a joint venture where if we're gonna support learners and ensure that they have accessible educational materials available to them in their education process, um, that we, they see this as we really need to start with the early childhood and make sure you know, students at a very young age, learners have uh, access to accessible materials uh, right through K-12 and then on into higher education and work, workforce development as well. So it's more of a holistic approach. Uh, although our state leadership team has been focused primarily on K-12 right now, we're just trying to pull everything together and, and make a, a good process and, and something that will be really useful to our, our schools throughout the state, our public high schools and, and elementary and middle schools. But uh, we also want to support and know the National Center supports each of these different stakeholder groups in our seven state co cohort. So hopefully you've all had an opportunity uh, on this collaborative team to meet with your cohort members from the other six states that that are in early childhood, higher ed, or workforce development. And um, if you need any assistance with making connections, feel free to email or contact me at any time. I'd be glad to help you if you need any assistance or have any questions about, about how the National Center is pulling all these groups together. If you have any thoughts on that, please feel free to contact me. And then in our state, we also selected uh, staff who we're calling K-12 collaborators. Uh, I think at some point we are really going to be um, leaning on you all and relying on you, probably helping us to take a look at some of the processes, some of the things that we've started to design to make sure that we can make it as effective as possible. And um, I know the National Center said, sometimes you have to start slow to move fast. Um, it's just a really big thing to get, to get our arms around as far as all the different pieces and all the different things that, that we do as a state um, to, basically um, take a look at all those and record where we're at right now and where we'll be going. And you all have probably had a chance to see the quality indicators that the, the National Center has. So there's a lot of different things from, from each of these stakeholder groups that we can look at for quality indicators and critical components. So one of the things that we've done um, earlier this year is we completed an in-depth self-assessment that the National Center designed. It's called, they call it the pilot. And um, it was a really lengthy process. The state leadership team um, walked through and we basically looked at a lot of really specific questions that they have on the self-assessment on all the um, quality indicators and it really was detailed. And we went through and answered a lot of questions, you know, found things where we were, you know, at a certain level and some things where we hadn't really started on certain topics and subjects and, and didn't have really anything to base, base it on. So we knew we had to pretty much start from square one on some pieces. And that basically really um, led us to where we would uh, then create this technical assistance plan that the National AEM Center had requested so that you know they can basically show uh, the, um, the Office of Education, you know, how are they going to be helping each of these states, including our own in the seven state cohort. So based on our responses and, and what we found in our self-assessment with the pilot, we completed our, our in-depth uh, technical assistance plan for the National AEM Center that um, 
listed basically all of our goals for the four year project and then those objectives to help meet those goals. So uh, we've got got that plan available now. It's out on our website and I still just need to update one one thing on it because we just did a quick update uh, in the last week to our vision statement, which I have listed um, here on the screen. And I'm gonna see if I can move things so I can read it correctly. So our new vision statement that we're working with is Missouri students, teachers, and parents will be able to access, acquire, create, and implement AEM. So we really feel like that encompasses primarily what we're doing um, here with this. And um, we thought about, we might include at some point, you know, learners, because we know, you know, some person, somebody, you know, saying workforce development may not consider themselves a student. It might be more of a learner, but we'll um, take a look at that in the future. But this, for now, I think we felt like this was a concise vision statement for us. So um, just wanted to let you all see, see the new vision statement and I will get that updated on our uh, technical assistance plan. And, and that is out on our website. I'll probably be sending everybody a link to that sometime in the near future. Does anybody have any questions about any, any of this so far? Okay, go to our next slide. So this is really just a quick summary of our priority goals for this school year for 21-22. And um, first off, we want to ensure that students have access to, um, to uh, timely access to their educational materials. We want to promote that definition of timely access. So basically, uh, what it all boils down to is that all students, regardless of disability, have access to the same educational materials at the same time when, when they're needed. So um, if any learner has access at whatever point that, that they all need access, then we want all of our students to have access at that time. Uh, we wanna increase uh, our AEM knowledge and learning opportunities for um, teachers especially, um, but also for parents and students. Um, and we don't want to forget about our parents and, and students as well, but we want to provide uh, easy to access brief training tutorials. And that's something that's overarching. We're really hoping to accomplish with this project. And um, we're right now in the process of trying to uh, make sure that we get the right training topics that we work on to create. But we want to have these brief training tutorials, say two to five minutes. And I know that a person can't learn everything about a topic necessarily in two to five, but we're really hoping to, to grab people with the, with the quick um, videos. And then if more information is needed to direct them to where to get more information. But, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So if we can get some videos out and just uh, show people some of the things that are available and what can be accomplished, we're very hopeful that we can drive them back to the, to more information so they can gain more knowledge to help all of our learners to be able to access and be able to have access to educa you know, accessible educational materials. And then finally here on this list is assuring effective resource allocation. And really, I think this is really important to leverage all of our existing resources so that we can deliver you know, accessible educational materials, the training and the information uh, to our students parents and, and teachers and staff. So that's our quick summary of, of our some of our priority goals. We have more, but this is just a quick look. Does anybody have anything to add or questions or thoughts, comments on these? Okay. And then just real quick, some next steps that we have. I'll go ahead and just kind of give you all some of these ideas and we might come back to this, but uh, we're just uh, right now uh, mobilizing the three district members um, of our state leadership team. They have been participating with us all throughout the state leadership team, but now we're really, we have a big ask of them to implement their own local teams, their district teams. 
that they would create something somewhat similar to our state leadership team, but in their district with um, individuals that have different roles from technology, you know, teachers, general ed, special ed, uh, administrators, um, parents, a parent at least. Um, so a team of at least five people. And so we've got this big ask for our districts. Um, we hope that they will be able to um, really help inform us on what topics and what, what are the needs in the district right now and what, what could we do, what topics could we build trainings around that would really help and assist um, districts. So um, we don't wanna do this without district input. And so that right now is kind of where we're focused right now. And, um, and then we're, we're calling these hot topics for our, for our brief training. So if anybody down the road, if you see really good brief trainings, if you wanna send a copy or a link to those, um, if you have any ideas, feel free to reach out to any member of our state leadership team. Um, feel free to contact me at any point. And um, that's, I think, what we're really working on right now. And then, let's see, I think I, I switch here. Okay, so that's kind of my wrap up for now. I'm going to just scroll back here to our agenda. So forgive me here for a moment. I'm going to jump back on the agenda here. Um, so now, unless anybody has any questions, I'll give you just another second again, if there's any questions or can anybody check the chat? I know. Uh, okay, Kelly. Kristen, there was a question in the chat. Um, could you remind us which districts you're working with? That's from Kelly Akers. Yeah, that's a great question because we've got, I, I don't think we have the other two districts on right now. If they are, they can totally pop in, but we have uh, Camdenton and then we have uh, El Dorado Springs, and and then of course Dawn mentioned she's on the call today from uh, Smithton. So those are our three districts. So um, if any of the districts are on, feel free to jump in and say something. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. That was a great question, and, and I should have mentioned all of our districts because they are a big piece of what we're doing here. Thank you very much for that. So, um, Kristen, any other Kristen I might add something real quick. Um, we can also add additional districts. So if there are, if you know of other districts that are out there that um, have some um, very definite uh, accessible educational materials kind of needs or uh, that you think would be a great addition to this work, we would love to have them join as well. So we can have more than three. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things that National Center was talking about that we don't have to limit ourselves. So. Yeah, that, that is great. And I am so thankful to our districts and we've had some really good conversations here um, lately on all the different things that we've been working on. So I really appreciate them all. And I appreciate Don being on the call today. Um, so now I would like to just see if we have any actual uh, project updates. So whether it is where you've participated in the, um, quarterly meetings that are with these uh, early childhood higher ed or workforce development stakeholder groups with, with your seven state cohort, or if you've been doing some work that you think is relevant to the this project and AEN, feel free to also update us on that. So if we have anybody on the call today from early childhood, feel free to give any kind of update that you would like. And I don't think we had anybody earlier, but I'm gonna give just a second, just in case we had anybody join. And now I want to give an opportunity for higher ed. I know Kelly, you're probably kind of on both sides of so Kelly. If you have any kind of update that you would like to give us, even about the work you're doing that might pertain or. Uh, well, I was saying earlier, uh, I believe I'm with the workforce development group uh, in terms of what we're doing here. I'm very well familiar with our <clears throat> office for disability support services here. Um, we work with them regularly uh, as to anything that's new or innovative. Uh, I do know in recent years, we've brought on specialists, um, for instance, in the area of autism uh, to work with post-secondary students in particular to provide access uh, to post-secondary education here. Great. So Kelly, can you tell us just a little bit more about that? Um, what does that actually look like? Um, 
Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, project? Um, and I haven't checked in with this person in a little while. I have a career career resource educator on my staff that uh, works primarily with secondary, but the de uh, the de um, Department of uh, Disability Support Services here, uh, I believe they've brought on a part-time autism person that works uh, intentionally, has more specific training and background in the needs of young adults with autism and supports their integration into their classrooms and academic success. Exactly how that looks, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and then I think we've also brought on perhaps another part-time person, and that would be uh, somebody that's working with uh, deaf and hard of hearing students here. So okay. um, just working with, we did have, uh, again, I need to check with that office. I know uh, our person who was working with assistive technology, and that was his, uh, basically his area of specialization here on our campus was promoted. Uh, but I would think that he has been replaced. So it seems like that office is getting to bring in kind of a, a cohort of uh, specializations that's kind of neat to see. Hey, well, that sounds really interesting. At some point in the future, we might ask you to um, make us a brief presentation on that. That sounds really great. And okay, happy to do so. Yeah, yeah. So we'd probably be interested in that in the future. Um, to hear more about that. Thank you very much, Kelly. You're welcome. And anybody else from higher ed? Did anyone else join us? I know that's a really small group. I think we have two people on that. And so let's go to workforce development. Um, is there anybody on the workforce development team as well as Kelly that what, would like to give a quick update? Uh, Kristen, this is Pat Rungi. I was on the I, I'm on the workforce development um, stakeholder group, and we recently had a workforce development stakeholder meeting um, on you know last week I think September 16th, and um, at that meeting you know we just met with um, some of the other states um, in the cohort and kind of just um, shared out. Kind of a self assessment of where we are and what we think that you know is going on in our state and. We talked about. Uh, what's currently happening. Um, to improve the physical communication and um, programmatic accessibility and for the most part, the consensus was that. States have improved their. Um, their physical accessibility and a lot of times the communication piece as well. But the part that we identified as the area that could use the most improvement or most um, training uh, would be the area of programmatic accessibility. And a lot of programs or websites, if you go on those and try to test them without using your mouse, you can see that they're um, really hard to navigate if you're a non-sighted person. So we did the no mouse challenge and we tried to navigate some websites without using a mouse. And it sounds not very hard. You know, you can use your up and down arrow and your tab key and all that stuff, but it's amazing how many uh, links there are on the on the menu and different things on the screen that you have to see in order to navigate to the right spot um, and able to you know go backwards and forwards or to narrow down your search because you don't know what you're clicking on or what you're seeing there on the screen um, especially on some of the menus and things across you know the top or down the side so to do all that without the mouse since I'm not used to doing it without a mouse was was really a challenge so um, that was a, a good exercise to see if a website was um, ex accessible. Um, we we also talked about uh, there was a there's a really good um, video uh, that Cast has. Uh, they call it their um, Cast uh, Ed Games video, and I I went on there to to look at that to to and that was a uh, some testimonials from students. Uh, with disabilities and they talked about which uh, accessible materials 
that they use. And that was really enlightening. There's some things in, you know, that they're using that um, I wasn't even aware of. So that was that's a really good video if anybody wants to um, go on and look at that. The um, it's cast the C A S T um, Ed Games videos. Um, we also talked about um, that there needs to be a more seamless transition between uh, higher ed and the the workforce. That higher ed and um, K-12 are doing a better job with providing accessible materials, but sometimes those materials that they're used to using in an educational environment don't necessarily transfer over to the, the job centers and the workforce. And so that there was um, a need there for some, some additional accessible materials um, and supports as they enter um, the workforce. So. That's basically what we talked about in, in our groups. We kind of broke out into some subgroups. And um, Roger, I, I saw you jumped on. Um, Roger Barnes is on here. He's on our group as well. But um, Roger, you weren't in my breakout group, so I don't know what you all talked about, if you had anything different. He's still on. He may have gotten off. Um, if I can uh, jump in there, Roger and I were in the same group. Uh, oh, okay. Secondly. Um, and, and maybe you all did this too. Uh, the no mouse challenge was very telling. Yeah. Did you all do that? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that was very challenging. Um, and that, uh, essentially maybe everybody got opportunity to do that, but that was kind of, uh, eye opening to me. And that is, uh, can you access, um, information on it, whether it be web based, whether it be a document on a computer, uh, is it accessible if you're not somebody that can manipulate a mouse and you are um, you're you are dependent on a keyboard in order to work through those sites and those documents. And that was very interesting. I'm really glad you all took the opportunity to to try that no mouse challenge, and I don't think that I've done that, but um, I've watched a lot of uh, keyboard user extraordinaires uh, with screen readers, and um, I've always thought that it would be a huge challenge for me to try to remember all those keyboard commands. Uh, but I am really glad that you all did that. It sounded like it was a great opportunity to take a look at at, at the challenges that are um, that we face with with websites if if they're not accessible, and also Pat, I just wanted to mention probably all all of your report as far as on workforce development. It's probably national trends that they've identified there at the National AEM Center. So we don't want it to reflect necessarily poorly on our state. I'm sure. I wish Yvonne Wright was on the call today, and we could um, have her give us a quick update. But we'll try to do that next time. But uh, I know there's a lot of work to do, and um, you know, nationally and in every state, we can all improve, and that's really what this whole project is about. And I appreciate that. And I saw that quick comment from uh, Samantha Scott about the navigating websites with the a lot of a lot of websites. Many websites are not very accessible or easy to navigate. If someone's using a screen reader, so I think that's a huge piece uh, to help make things accessible. Is is when somebody is using technology. And we, that's a big piece of access, accessible educational materials is to make the materials accessible with technology and assistive technology that, that um, learners are using. So I know uh, it's uh, it's a really enlightening for me to uh, sit in uh, a couple of meetings that I've been on the blind task force to to listen in and and just hear about you know different things that that are being worked on through that task force. So here in the Office of Special Education. Uh, does anybody else have an update uh, from the workforce development group? I, I sure don't mean to uh, monopolize, um, but I do have a point of interest kind of locally. Is that okay? Sure, yes, please. Okay, and I've put it in the chat. Um, in addition to managing our, our area career center here, 
um, I was asked to develop and, and manage a, um, a DOL grant, which is a demonstration grant called Job Corps Scholars. And it takes essentially kind of the model from the Job Corps Centers and places it on the community college uh, campus. By doing that, we've been able to leverage that disability support um, that we are, we feel like we're, we're very good at um, providing and use that with these young people who are going through technical training and then we'll, we will work with them uh, on the job search on the back end of that as well. So they're able to uh, take advantage of all the resources we have here, including that, uh, those support services. That is great. That is a great tie in um, from higher ed to workforce development. Um, that sounds really, really great and exciting. And um, hopefully you can share that with the National Center and the Southern State Cohort in the future. Have you had an opportunity to talk with them about this, this yet or update the Southern State Cohort on that? I have not, no, um, that's a good question. Um, it, it feels like when it comes to this topic, uh, I have been a special education teacher at the high school level. I've been a, a process coordinator and I've been a special education administrator. And now I'm a career, um, a CTE administrator. So I feel like I have multiple feet in this world. Um, but um, no, I, I, I just think that this as a demonstration project is we have students that are very at risk um, and we seek out those two that um, self-report disabilities um, and uh, it's just been an interesting test case all around as to how we support their training and their job search through this grant. That's great. And Kelly, I think that I saw where um, the next uh, quarterly meeting will be combined between higher ed and workforce development, if I, if I recall correctly. So that might be a great time for you to be able to update the seven state cohort and just um, see if if you can make any connections with them and, and share what's going on in our state and um, with uh, with the seven state cohort on AEM. So that's great. Thank you so much for that update. Does anybody else uh, have any other comments on the workforce development piece so far? Okay, and if not, let's um, shift gears to K-12 collaborators. Um, does, I know you guys don't actually meet with the, the national office on quarterly meetings, but does anybody with the K-12 collaborators have any kind of update that would pertain to this AEM? Well, this is the, I'll talk. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I am excited. Kristen and I have, have talked about this. And so she's, uh, her next step is going to be, um, uh, said working directly with the districts. Uh, she's going to, uh, get some, some very customized work out to them to help them get started, getting their uh, teams assembled, uh, some actual materials that they can use. So, um, I think Dawn, Dawn, did I see you on here, Dawn? I think she had to just leave while ago, I think a okay, couple minutes sorry, ago. I missed. Okay, well, shoot. Well, anyway, um, so I think that, but that will be a great start to um, getting the districts actually up and rolling. And um, so one of their first tasks will be to help give us some feedback on topics, <clears throat> excuse me, topics that uh, districts want information about. So for example, could be awareness, uh, could be what's the difference between AEM and UDL, uh, just different topics. So um, I guess I would extend that invitation to this group as well. If you have other topics that you think would be of interest um, for some short informational videos um, on the website, then we would be very interested to know those. Yes, I totally concur with that. And I hope you all will share any topics that you that you have. Feel free to email those to me. Feel free to give me a call if you just have an idea. Thank you very much, Thea. Hey, okay, and um, Samantha, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have any update? I know you put something in the chat there a while ago about the uh, the difficulty on a lot of websites. Do you have any kind of update? You may be our our sole K-12 uh, collaborator in that group. 
Well, I don't know if I have any specific updates. Um, I do oversee our children's services program um, where we have children specialists who cover um, they're broken up and cover different parts of the state. Um, part of what they do is help provide advocacy support to um, our parents and families as they're going through the special education process. So, I mean, when we're um, involved in that process, we're always considering, you know, accessibility and if um, the students have the right um, tools and if they have accessible materials. So, I mean, that's something that's kind of like an ongoing um, update that we're always working on. Um, and I think a big thing that we always try to hit on is um, two uh, key pieces. The first one is, you know, do they have accessible materials? Um, but then the second piece is, do they have the tools and not only the tools, but the training and know how to use um, those so that they'll be successful in school and beyond. Yeah, I think those are two really vital pieces, the tools and the training. Thank you for that update, Samantha. I appreciate that. Sure. If anybody else is uh, on with K-12 collaborators group would like to give a quick update, uh, you could do that now. And if not, we'll go ahead and transition to our next piece on the agenda and uh, the state leadership team. And I'd ask David Baker, the director of Missouri Assistive Technology, if he would give us an update. And I know he's got a lot of interesting things that he can talk about, but David, are you available now to on the agenda to give us an update? I am, and I'd be glad to. And, okay, thank you. Uh, hopefully I'll get everything organized in my head here and cover all the bases because there's a lot of material to uh, to kind of update people on. Um, so I'm going to start by taking a step back uh, because Missouri Assistive Technology, you know, way back in what, 2004 and IDEA is the first time we saw a reference to accessible at that point and in accessible instructional materials. And so this is something we've actually been working on for a number of years, predominantly with the K-12 environment, but we've kind of um, only had one leg of the stool in the, in the game in the sense of usually we are working with school districts to help them identify the assistive technology that a student needs to be able to use the accessible materials. So, you know, screen readers, um, text to speech software, all those types of devices. So when this opportunity came available for Missouri, I was extremely excited and even more excited when Missouri was chosen as one of the AIM cohort states. And this is a wonderful opportunity for everybody involved and especially you know, we have early childhood all the way up through work uh, workforce development because this will, I, I think, in the long run, really develop the depth and breadth of understanding and knowledge on the subject of accessible educational materials, their value. And it's, you know, the bigger issue here is just accessibility in general because of the fact that that early childhood student who is beginning to understand accessible educational materials moves into the K-12, they're still going to need those materials when they become part of workforce. So if we can build the, the capacity of everybody involved, in, in particular um, the students, and then I think everybody's a winner and the state is better off and uh, we see more people with disabilities hopefully ending up being employed in one thing and another. So Kristen talked um, a little bit on some of the things that the state leadership team has been doing. And um, there's, you know, I think she kind of um, didn't give herself enough credit there because she's been extremely busy getting uh, this off the ground in, in the state of Missouri while simultaneously, I think, learning a little, learning what it is um, since I've known you for quite a few years, Kristen, and I know this wasn't your background before. Um, so, the the work that the state leadership team has done, like I said, Kristen mentioned this, I and mean, we went through the self-assessment and then we've developed the plan. And I'll have to confess the self-assessment was, um, and others who have gone through this might agree, the self-assessment was a little bit humbling, but it was really beneficial to kind of have a, a good baseline as to where we are as a state with things like our, our coordinated system and the idea of timely manner for the provision and having guidelines and understanding procurement and all those types of things. And so while it was humbling, it's really gonna be valuable in the end because we, now we know where we need to go 
using those quality indicators to help us reach those highest indicators so that everybody benefits. And so now that we've put our, we've kind of done all the infrastructure related work, then, um, you know, there's a number of things that are, that again have been mentioned that we're getting ready to move into. And one of the things that we are going to do, um, sort of, it's kind of like a two prong attack, I guess, because I've gotten really enthusiastic about this whole subject of accessible educational materials. Again, um, we, you know, like I said, we've done stuff on and off over the years. But now with this going on, we're even more enthusiastic around here. So we're going to start a couple of initiatives that tie into what the state leadership team is doing. And we're actually going to start these um, towards the end of the week or beginning of next week when uh, we'll be down at the MoCase conference and we have a session that's devoted to this topic. And there are some things that I really, there's a couple of trial balloons. Um, it's going to be a pretty introductory presentation just to kind of begin to build capacity, knowledge, get it, people kind of talking the same lingo on the same page. But there are two trial balloons that I am hoping to float to get good feedback on. The first one is, um, you know, this is the kind of thing where if we don't continue to sort of push ideas and knowledge forward on a regular basis, then people will kind of hook in, pull out, hook in, pull out. And so I would really like to see the development of a um, maybe once a month, quick 20, 30 minute webinar that people could jump onto, and it's going to touch on key things around this whole subject of accessible educational materials. So, for instance, um, how do we make our own in house accessible materials? What are um, accessible media producers? What does it mean by timely manner? So all those subjects we kind of know people might have a passing knowledge of, but maybe need a little bit deeper knowledge. And then also this would be beneficial for those people that aren't really quite up to date yet on the glossary and the lingo that kind of goes into this whole subject. The other thing we'd really like to do is begin to tie people together who are doing things. We've known for a number of years that there are school districts and other folks around the state who have really done done quality work in this area. Um, there's some school districts that for a lot of years have been working on this. And so if we could start to tie people together through a community of practice that might get together again once a month, once every other month, and you know, sort of a peer-to-peer -peer thing where people are sharing what's working, what they've learned, what they need help with, so that again, we can sort of build capacity across the state. And these same ideas, these little quick webinars, um, tying people together through a community of practice, easily translatable into the other arenas as well. So these are type, these are the types of things that might be valued to early childhood, they might be valuable for workforce development. Um, and they're all, again, it, built around the idea of just building capacity, just increasing the depth and the breadth of knowledge that people have so that we're all on the same page as we begin to move forward and better provide accessible educational materials. So incredibly excited about this project. A lot of um, not glorious, but very important work has been done. And I was really excited by some of the stuff that I heard uh, several of you from higher ed and uh, early childhood and others talk about um, and was, Kind of laughing at the keyboard challenge because it's been a while since i've done that and i remember that being humbling for me as well and that's a great exercise that everybody should go through so and then one shameless plug here at the very end and that is um, there are great resources out there that are easily digestible um, kristen has mentioned aim cast uh, which is the accessible educational materials um, sort of technical assistance center nationally they have great materials on these subjects for all populations on their website um, and then we also have uh, materials on the missouri assistive technology website uh, there's a whole section devoted to accessible instructional materials but there's another sort of bigger um, aspect of this that I think is equally as important, and that is just information communication technology access. You know, the, all these things related to websites and accessible buying devices that are accessible so that we aren't retrofitting things is really important. And so that might be something that on an agency wide basis, people might be more interested in and we have materials. And so if people are looking for a quick place to go to kind of acknowledge themselves a little more up. Not really sure how I put that sentence together, not in a good way. Anyway, I think you got the gist of it. Um, then those are a couple of, of other resources to uh, keep in mind as you uh, build your understanding. So.
we'll stop there. Thank you very much, David. That was really insightful and uh, I think really interesting. I think it really shows me that a lot of momentum is building around AEM and I'm really glad that you're taking on these uh, two big projects with the, the webinar and the community of practice. I think it's really exciting and I really look forward to hearing um, the response and, and doing whatever I can to help participate with those. I think it's, it's really exciting and great. So thank you very much for that. And mm -hmm. um, I really think that that's really going to help help us build. Um, if we, uh, I think in a year from now, if we did another one of those uh, giant self assessments, I think we're going to be a long <laughs> way down the road. I think right now we don't feel like it, but I think we will, especially with the work that, that you're doing to help uh, propel us forward. And I really appreciate that. And in our districts as well, I wish we had them on the call. I'm going to try to have our districts present um, during our next meeting, it just didn't quite work out for this one, but we have uh, this quarterly meeting. We have it coming up in December. I believe it's on the 14th. And um, I'm gonna try to have our districts talking more then, and hopefully we'll get to hear a little bit more about um, how they form up their teams. And, and I think once those three district teams, and if we would happen to have any other districts want to participate, um, when we see some district teams come together, I think there's going to be a lot of learning and a lot of transfer of knowledge between those districts. And I think David can do a lot to help them um, share that information and, and learn from each other as well. And hopefully I will be able to assist those districts with that as well. We've got the National Center. We, uh, we have intensive, our, st our state leadership team receives intensive technical assistance from the National AEM Center. And they've worked with us really closely in the in the last few months to um, help us get our planning uh, set up and and help us set up these teams. So I do appreciate that. So if we find any type of uh, training topics that um, individuals, professionals in the field feel are would be really helpful to have those topics, please by all means send those to myself. Uh, send them to anybody on the state leadership team, David Baker included. Um, if if you don't have his email address, I'll I'll provide it to you if you want to contact him directly. How's that, David? <laughs> so, uh, Kristen, anyway. I might add I might add one more thing. Sorry, I keep jumping in on you, but um, I also wanted to mention that. Um, so I work with the uh, National Sister on <laughs> Center. Excuse me, not sister. <laughs> I'm thinking about my sister. National Center on Systemic Improvement and uh, NCSI and a subgroup of that that is working uh, is, is a universal design or UDL for learning um, subgroup and, and committee. And that committee, uh, what I suggested was our work with AEM and UDL and how the, the two centers could come together perhaps to help us uh, further this work and make some of those connections. So uh, that's something that Kristen and I are meeting with uh, with representatives from both of those groups. So, like I said, I just wanted to mention that because I think that's going to be a, a, a very positive connection for us as well. And yeah. we should have more information on that pretty soon. Yes, and I am so glad you mentioned that. And that was one of the topics that um, Sherry Chambers with the El Dorado District was um, going to mention if she would be able to be on the call. And I don't think she ever got to join the chat, but um, she is also inter interested, as well as our entire state leadership team, in um, bringing uh, bringing general education along with the, with us on this project. And um, so the UDL or Universal Design for Learning. I mean, it's really all about how to provide this for every everyone. Just like the age old story of the curb cut. You know, it was originally designed to help people who used wheelchairs um, to access the sidewalks on and off, but then it helped a whole lot of other people as well. Everybody that um, has a, a suitcase or something rolling or a, a you know, a baby, baby buggy, it helps a lot of people, you know, ramps, a lot of people use ramps now would, re would rather use those than, than stairs. So um, the UDL, I think is just another piece where um, we can help kind of tie in and and also bring general education along. And I think that's really gonna be an important piece in the future. I'm glad you mentioned that. And uh, I really, I, I wanted to have our districts also on to talk a little bit more about that, but we'll try to do that on our next quarterly meeting. And I, I think we are 
getting pretty near to the our time. I think we just have a few minutes, but does anybody else have any questions, comments, or suggestions before we wrap this up and, and adjourn today? Okay, well, if not, I just want to thank you all for being on the call today. Thanks for participating today and in our project uh, for our next three years. And I think the future looks bright for this group. And thank you all for being on the call today. Thank you very much. We're adjourned. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks, Pat.